mine. Tough noogies, Dad. You snooze, you lose. Well, what's a noogie? You don't want to know. No, I'm sure I don't. Make sure you put your homework in your school bag. I did. What's that over there by the bread thing? Hey, Dad, I wanted that. Mmm, yeah, I know. It's lovely. You have a good day at school. Right, babe. I'm off. Dad, don't call Mum, babe. It's almost as embarrassing as when you do that. Stay calm and everything will be fine. Put your hands on the wheel and keep them there. There you go. Now take a look in your front room window. You can't. Again, we did. It's happening. Just do exactly as I say, and your family will be fine. What do you want? I want you not to do anything stupid when I take this thing off you now. I understand. Are we calm? No. But I'm not going to do anything heroic while you've got my family. Good man. What do you want? I want you to go to work. You ever worry about nuclear warfare? No. Freaks me out. Oh, you just got to remember your training. Always hold your weapon at arm's length so when the barrel melts, none of the bits of molten metal scorch your uniform. I'm serious. So am I. What now? I think I'm laying dog shit. <laughs> well, apparently, it's lucky. Material. You what? I'm going to have to ask you to step out of the vehicle, Sarge. Toast smuggling. <sighs> well, you better destroy the evidence then, aren't you? Lost your appetite, Sarge. Late night. Somebody's definitely pissed in his ricicles. <laughs> You okay, Paul? Yeah, just haven't had my caffeine yet this morning, sir. No, me neither. Someone forgot to refill the coffee machine. Looking forward to next month? Well, there's so little going on here. I feel I'm retired already. Uh, are you on security in the visitor centre today? Yes, sir. Crack on, then. Have a 
Chết chơi Chết Please. Right then, daily sit reports. Alert codes remain at yellow threat level. None of the overnight patrols had anything to report. Now, there are two student parties in the visitor center today. So don't frighten anyone with your weapons, all right? Carry on. Here at Bushwell, the reactor is managed and operated by UKFL. A company that combines global grasp and world-class operations. Our activities span the entire nuclear energy cycle, from fuel manufacture and reactor design, to decommissioning and storage of spent fuel. So you're a private company? Yes. The nuclear industry is a public-private partnership. Like hospitals, schools, that kind of thing? Well, sort of. Oh, that's great then, isn't it? Nuclear safety left to the lowest bidder. No offence, but wouldn't it be better completely run by the state? Chernobyl was run by the state. We're highly responsible and very tightly regulated. We even have, as you would have seen as you entered, a dedicated police force. DCI Boog. Are you in the Citadel? Who is this? You're watching the monitors covering the visitor center. No. Oh, they're down. Take a look. Chief! Oh, God. Visitors! Hostages! Establish the perimeter! Go! 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 people with guns. Be calm. Stay calm. There are people with guns in the visitor center. That's why we have it half a mile from the citadel and the reactors to keep the crazies away from the hot spots where they can do damage. We are secure here. Chief Inspector Boom. Red card, you understand what I mean when I say red card? I am a staff sergeant in the SAS. Do you understand me when I say red card? SAS? I thought you were supposed to be the good guys. What's going on? Ask the bloke in charge. 
No name. Him. Zero Alpha, this is Romeo One Zero Alpha. We have control. Red card has been delivered. This is a drill. I repeat, a drill. We've just executed a practical assessment of your security measures according to DTI regulations. How did we do? You're all dead. You and the rest of Southwest England. You better get a brew on. Sugar? Not gonna make this any sweeter, is it? You caught us with our pants down. Now you get to give us a kicking. We're not here to score points, Detective Chief Inspector. We're on the same side. Should we get on with it, then? This is Captain Fleming, and this is Staff Sergeant Garvey. They planned and executed the drill independently of any special knowledge or resources available to us. Jolly good. Meaning? Meaning. We only used publicly available information and close observation to evolve and implement our plan. Just the same as any moderately intelligent patient terrorist might have done. So your brainy and your patient, congratulations, you made us look like a bunch of tits. Making you look like tits wasn't the brief. Was a bonus, though. Staff. <laughs> Boss. I apologize. Everyone take a deep breath and get over themselves. Patrick. Right. We've been tasked by the DTI and the MOD to test nuclear security. I've just found a loophole. This exercise was prompted by intel chatter picked up by the security services about a move on a nuclear facility. Hence the need to make sure that your security is top of the line. Which it isn't. Clearly. So where do we go from here? Onward and upward. Red Troop prefer the task to stay on site and advise, monitor, and bolster existing security. You're going to hold our hands? My lads won't like it. Your lads will take your lead, Detective Chief Inspector, and I'm sure they'll love it. No, they won't, and nor will I. I retire in a couple of months. Until now, my record's been spotless. You're right, I need to get over myself, don't I? Good man. If you're saying you're gonna need somewhere to bunk down. <laughs> well, this is cozy. Sleeping next to a nuclear reactor, yeah? Well, you forgot your little pajamas, mate. I'll sleep on that trail, one of me. Uh... Do you mind? I'm trying to eat. You know how many of the firemen who went to Chernobyl died within three years? This is another one of your uplifting statistics. I on all of them. Yeah, well, let's try not to set fire to anything, eh? So what brings you to London, sir? Business or pleasure? Well, ideally both, but primarily business. What might that be? Toilet seats. Sir? <laughs> I know. Don't ask. It's a family business. Heated toilet seats. I'm here for the trade fair at Olympia. Heated toilet seats? Well, given your fine country's reputation for cold winters and poorly insulated bathrooms, hope to make a killing. Well, that's a first. Enjoy your stay, Mr. Hurley. Mr. Haley, Mr. Burden. Hey, dog. Dog. You make these names up or what? 
Yeah, he came on the passports. Looks like our client has a sense of humor. Hmm, no kidding. Where are the guys? They're uh, playing football. Football? Soccer. Yeah, I never did get soccer. It's a girls' game. Relax, Gunny. These guys are a dealio. Mm -hmm. They motivated? Oh, yeah. Just the way you like them. High speed, low drag. thing to focus on is they've hired you for your expertise as a specialist. Ron, good to see you, too. I am a specialist. So don't diss them to their faces. They robbed a lot of banks across Russia to pay your price. Yeah, well, they still look like crazies. Like that's a bad thing? Since when have you worried about who paid your fee? Dog, these guys may look like a bag of puke, but they're stone killers. Guys, listen up. This is Haley. Haley, we pay you good money. You good? It's a pope shit in the Vatican. All right, Haley, this is Ras, Dva, Tree, Cheddary. Yeah, I get it. One, two, three, four in Russian, right? Chortsky Rabiata. The devil's children. Neato. You kids want to play with some toys? Huh? Bang, bang, boom? Yes, yes, you take us now. All right, let's go. Where did you find these fruit loops? Kiev. And keep your shit wired tight, Gunny. They found me, remember? Okay, you lot, listen in. This is Dr. Warner. She'll be giving us an orientation chat about nuclear accidents and contamination. Only orientation I'll need to know is which direction my ass is facing so I can kiss it goodbye. The war our NBC training, sir. You'll all need one of these. Anyone working on site has to wear a radiation detector. Are you all sitting comfortably? Uh, crack on, Doctor. They think better on their feet. Hiroshima. Sixty years on, and it's not getting prettier. There are two types of radiation exposure. Irradiation which is exposure to waves that pass through your body, leading to acute radiation sickness, damaged DNA, cancer, etc. Etc. We don't need to go into the etcs in detail, but they aren't pretty either. Irradiation doesn't, however, make the victim radioactive. That's the second form of exposure, which we call contamination, which is contact with and retention of radioactive material, say dust, which is absorbed by the skin or ingested. This won't give you radiation sickness, but it will still kill you with things like cancer and... More, etc. There are three types of contamination. Type 1 is hematopoietic. That one went right over my head. Well, that's better than your bone marrow. Your spleen, your lymph glands, all the major sites of blood production. You'll feel nauseous for the first 2 to 12 hours and then fine for about a week, unaware that your blood-producing system is dying. If you survive for five weeks, you might get better. Most don't. Almost put me right off. Gastrointestinal contamination occurs when you ingest nuclear contaminated material. The cells lining your gut are dying and the resultant bloody diarrhea is the first stage in a painful death as the bacteria from your digestive tract fatally invade the rest of the body. And the third type of contamination? Type 3 is cerebrovascular. That's contamination of blood and brain leading to confusion, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, shock, plunging blood pressure, seizures, coma, death. Always. Excuse me. Okay, these are your guns. AKs, so I figure you know how to use them. These are your suits. We're gonna drill on how to put them on. No suits. We don't care. Okay, your funeral. Radio jammer, explosives, and... After the foam masts. More explosives. Now, I know my colleagues briefed you on the plan, but I want to go over it again, okay? Okay. Okay, now we got a big day tomorrow, so let's get this right. Okay. 
And we've got a meeting first thing tomorrow with these guys about their transport security, so uh, I'm going to sack it. Good idea. Right. The area of activities we're most concerned about is the transport of materials out of the control perimeter of the facility. Okay, transportation is one of our biggest headaches, no quest. It's, uh, it's the one place where we're vulnerable. It's one of the places we're vulnerable. Anyway, here's the drill. This beast is the hazmat truck. It's tougher than most tanks. The wheels are solid. The drivetrain is double armored. The driver travels in a cockpit with its own air supply. It can take a run from a mortar or a cannon and it won't breach. Stall this on a railway crossing with a train coming. Worry about the train. You sound confident. Too confident. It travels in its own motorcade. The road ahead is swept by outriders and the escort team travel in armored Land Rovers. As you can see, it's a titanic piece of engineering. Well, let's hope it doesn't meet an iceberg. <laughs> We've never had an accident or lost anything, not transporting material by road or by rail. Very impressive. I hope so, because it's a dummy. We send this off, lights flashing, siren wailing, calling attention to itself. Meanwhile, it's rubbish day. Come on. Well, this is the real thing. This, however, is a... This is built to the same specification as the hazmat truck. It's bomb-proof, crash-proof, bad guy-proof. What happens is the regular rubbish lorry, drives into the facility, disappears round the back, parks up out of sight, and this identical truck leaves. No one outside notices any difference, and it picks up an escort of armored plainclothes police once it's outside. Bait and switch. Exactly. No one knows it's carrying nuclear materials, no one pays it any attention. All right, I admit, it's clever. Praise from Caesar. Maybe you'd like to join the convoy as a ride-along. See if there are any aspects where you'd advise tightening up. Fair enough. Dave, do you want to go with? A ride-along. What joy. The convoy is carrying rods of gamma-ray emitting cobalt. Not actually used here on site, but in food irradiation plants. Don't ask. Or buy veg from a supermarket. The container is numbered. Weird. That's like one digit of my phone number. That's 77771371136. The 7 signify cobalt, the 137 its isotope. Interesting. Are you serious? Yeah. Now I know that number you won't give me. You should put your belt on. He's got an airbag. 
I need to go for my weapon. It gets in the way. You having fun, yep? I look like I'm having fun. You're not exactly Johnny Chuckles at the best of times, so it's hard to tell. <laughs> it's this mob. Nuclear renter cop. Excuse me? No, I don't. <sighs> Sticks in my throat. You don't play around with things that can blow up the planet. I mean, we walked into your gaff like a couple of pikeys blagging us up post office, and you all but held the door open for us. Uh, come on, be fair. We are very good at what we do. Wake up, Dave. There are plenty of people out there like us these days. Know the ropes, have the training. All it takes are a couple of misguided fanatics or somebody with enough money. Listen, you need to educate yourself, Sergeant. Nowadays, the nuclear industry is safe. Yeah, well, that's what they told my old man in 1956. Montebello Islands. We blew up an atoll in the Pacific. 15 kilotons. And then the geniuses thought it would be a great idea to send an HMS Diana into the fallout to see how it affected the ship. My dad was 17. Boy sailor. I didn't know, mate. Why would you? No one had a clue. It was a complete cake and ass party. Cancer of the thyroid at 30. We didn't get to play a lot of football together, you know what I mean? You barely got to see me walk. Sorry, mate. Yeah, well, let's just keep it between you, me and him, eh? My point is, you don't play about. Look out! Lose the phones. They're gone. Good work. Let's pop the cherry. Should have worn his seatbelt. <laughs> On all sides, this is Romeo 10 Alpha. We are under attack.
beast on a bloody bicycle, Henry. Patrick. Grab your noddy suits and mount up. Well, is this a drill? Move! We've got a man down and nuclear material loose somewhere in the home counties. Dog, we're bad. We're still bad. High speed, no drag. drag. As ever, buddy. I'll drop the Ivans and I'll call. Later, dog. Kevlar took the round, he's got cracked ribs, refuses to go to hospital. You? Pissed off, ready to get even. Tell me about them. Military. Sure. Had to be, it's the way we would have done it. First of the kit, they had NBC suits and their vehicle had solid tyres. Secondly, they jammed the radios, did something to the telephone. Benson says they took out the phone cell relay mast in the area. Well, you see my point. Lastly, they knew how to get into the vehicle, had the kit to do it and were in and out in under four minutes. I messed up. Lost him at the crossroads. Don't waste time second-guessing yourself, staff. You did more than could be expected of you. You two were just along for the ride. You win some, you lose some. Yeah, well, thanks for the cliché. When the sum you might be losing is London, it doesn't really help. Yeah. Well, given the likelihood of London as a target, I suggest we erect a cordon around it until we know where the cobalt is. Are we premature? With due respect to our political masters, this isn't open to debate or spin. I resent that. Good for you, sir. There is a contingency plan, known as Contingency November Echo. It goes into motion, which means all trains into London stopped, all tubes, all roads blocked. All available police out of their offices and onto the streets. My men are searching the immediate area, but we need massive backup. No planes or helicopters, big or small, to be allowed to overfly the city. Exactly. And I believe the RAF are flying a defensive shoot-on-sight perimeter. That's correct. how much quieter things are in the canal. Explosion, two o'clock. Got it, Romeo, one three. Watch the Geiger. There's a dirty bomb, we're in real trouble. Tell you what, I could do without a sunset. <laughs> What's the joke? Less broke, pal. <laughs> I'm like smart ass. Well, 
that's the vehicle they were in. Good news is, no radiation. The bad news is, they could have jogged up here, got into a clean car, caught a train, jumped a bus. All routes into the city are closed under contingency November Echo. All routes. A question from my team. Are canals into London being interdicted along with other routes? heading straight into London. You think we're overreacting, Colonel? We don't know enough to make that call. The mayor's office wants to make an announcement. Good idea. People should be told to stay inside. There's no chance of a nuclear explosion, but there is a big chance of a dirty or slow bomb. The way to save lives is for people to stay inside with their windows shut. You don't know that this stolen material will be used today, tomorrow, or in five years' time. You don't even know if it's going to be used in this country. I'd be delighted to be wrong, but that's why we have the precautionary principle. Because sometimes looking silly is the best option we have. Number 10 will make that call. Russian kamikaze. You go, now American. If you make phone call, you've been paid. Now you're done. Okay, guys. It's nice working with you. I won't say au revoir, I guess. Have a nice day. Hello? I have nuclear material. I have bomb. Hey, dog, it's done. Yeah, the crazies are on the roof. It's all kicked off. Yeah, I'm out of here. All right, see you at the RV. Hey, Yank. Who's the smart ass now, eh? <laughs> English assholes always talking when you should be fighting. Alaska! Rabiata, the devil's children, a.k.a. Chernobyl's children. It's an extreme ultra-nationalist Russian-Ukrainian faction who believe that all the ills of the ex-Soviet states 
stem from the West's actions in and after the Cold War. They've got a point. They missed the boundaries of the old greater Russia. They want to put Hunter together again. Long term, yes. Short term, they want political prisoners released from Russian and Ukrainian jails and other political prisoner releases from five further countries. And a hundred million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. However, they style themselves as the most dangerous terrorists because they have looked a nuclear catastrophe in the face and now have nothing to lose. Then what the hell are they doing on my patch? They say if they pulled a stunt like this in Russia, there'd have been a news blackout and no one would have known. Putin's got things sewn up tight over there. They're media savvy. They're insane. And their demands are impossible. I do hope not. Because given the wind speed and direction, we may be looking at losing the centre of London for a long, long time. How long? Anyone know the half-life of Cobalt-137? I have a computer simulation of the dispersal cloud, given the current wind speed and bearing. Bye-bye, London. Finn, I want you to take the high ground in that adjacent tower block. Get a scope on the rooftop. Right, I've just spoken to local council. They're biking over a map of the estates and all the building schematics they can find. Good job. The rest of us, kid up, stand ready for an assault. Move, now. Brian. Should we be worried? Not yet. All traffic in London is now gridlocked. If we're to stand any chance of organizing an evacuation, the first step is to get it flowing again. Now we know where the cobalt is, we can surely remove the cordon. My advice would be to wait until the siege is resolved. Your advice is noted. However, we may have a city to evacuate. Okay. Okay, what? Okay, the plan worked. Cordon's down, slow road to London is wide open, thanks to your crazies on the roof. Sir, maybe we can trace who he's been calling and start putting together a profile. Excellent. I should have thought of that. Thanks. Well, don't tell me. Tell Colonel Dempsey. Well, that's pretty good news. Romeo 1-3, this is Zero Alpha. What's your status, over? Mm. I have a good vigil on these clowns. There's four of them in a cluster on the roof, wired to a canister on the central aerial. Tell me about the canisters. See for yourself. I'm sending you gun cam images. Okay, got him. There's the bomb. These wires go to each of them. They appear to be dead men's switches, so... Even if I was to take them out with a neck shot, paralysing them, the impact of the bullet would knock them off the switch, and boom. I hope you have a better plan. They're sniper-proof.
I'm against evacuation. Are you serious? Deadly. People will be killed in the panic. They should stay inside and seal rooms until further notice. That is how to survive a dirty bomb. Wait for the dust to settle, then methodically evacuate block by block and decontaminate as people leave the area. Do we have the resources for that? Look, just because we may be about to say goodbye to London doesn't mean we have to lose Londoners. The last thing we need are people running around outside as dust from a detonation lands on them and kills them all later with cancer. This is Romeo One Zero Alpha. Go ahead. We're at the top of the stairs. We confirm four X rays. The door to the roof is booby trapped. There is no way we can assault through it. We're doing Iranian embassy siege. Sideways. What? Nothing. It's good. Translation. The number B squadron made their assault on the Iranian embassy. Yeah. And they carefully took out bricks in the side walls and made their assault through them. And instead of blowing holes in the side walls, we're going to make our assault through the ceiling. And how are we supposed to pop up in the right place? How are we supposed to pop up at all? I'm not bloody Zebedee. Yeah, well, if the captain's thinking what I'm thinking, that's not the way around it's going to be. Exactly. Let the mountain come to a hand. Dave. Dave's in the shapes and charges. And then we're going to have them drop in for a little chat. Like it? Have it. Very good. You're getting an awfully sick mind, sir. Must be rubbing off. All this bad company I'm keeping. Get them out. They're below the terrorists now. But the risk is appalling. Stand easy. It's just a contingency plan. I can assure you, no one's going to do anything, not with terrorists holding dead men's switches attached to a dirty bomb. Zero Alpha, this is Romeo 13. I have a problem with the cobalt container. What kind of problem? I've been looking at it, but it's just struck me. The numbers are wrong. Well, what do you mean, wrong? Can you see my scope cam? Not right now. Zero Alpha, this is Sunray. I have your visuals on screen. See the identify numbers on the side. They're different from the ones we saw loaded onto the truck they hijacked. What are you, Romeo 13? Some kind of rain man with long numbers? No, sir. Seriously, sir. Those numbers are six prefixes. The others were seven prefixes. I remember because Trooper Gallica made a joke about it almost being our phone number. Some ray, this is Zero Alpha confirming that. Out. Get me DCI booth at Bushwell, now. Yes, sir, I'm sure, sir. No doubt at all, sir. The stolen containers were cobalt, that is, the canisters were all prefix sevens, not sixes. The prefix six is for cesium, and no cesium has been moved on yet. The material stolen today was cobalt. Cobalt is identified by a seven prefix on the canisters. This is a six. What does that mean? That means we've been had. I want to speak to the PM now. Why? I need permission to clear the roof. Yes, sir. Understood. Zero Alpha out. Right. We're green to go. We good. Let's tidy this thing up. We go in three. On my mark. Three, two, one. This is Romeo 13. I have no visual. Repeat, I have no visual on the X ray. Back up. Jump. I think I got him. She got him. She got him. Did you see that? Like a jacket of rocks. This troop's turning into a circus. They have a problem with that stuff? No. I quite like the circus. Hello. Doesn't smell right for Semtex. It's 
plasticine. We've been had. Looks like our Russian friends have been had as well. Yeah. But why? Decoy. The only reason to decoy was to make us drop our guard. How do you mean, drop our guard? I don't know. But I suggest we all now work on the assumption that there is a dirty bomb somewhere in central London. He should have called already. Worst case, they screwed up, so what? They provided the distraction. Can't believe the Ivans thought they found us. Screw the Russians. Burton and I served together, okay? He's my dog. Gunny, the day you went freelance was the day you lost the right to all that Semper Fi bullshit. So you want to deep six it and concentrate? Shit, and they say it's women who let emotions cloud their judgment. Yeah, well, if the Russians are stupid for thinking they hired us, what does that make me and you? It's not like we know who's floating the 15 million in the Caymans, is it? I got a pretty good idea what they are. Of course you do. You know everything. It's not rocket science, genius. It's strictly business. We'd want to destroy the oldest, largest financial institution in the world and drop the UK stock market through the floor forever. So this is about stock price, huh? <laughs> yeah, turning the city of London into a no-go area for a few centuries. Well, uh, yeah can't think of more than a few hundred thousand financial players who stand to make a killing if they knew about it ahead of time. Financial terrorism? Just a continuation of capitalism by other means. Well, you know, screw it. I can live with that. Never did like London much anyway. Beer is shitty and the women are fine enough until you get a look at the state of their teeth and suddenly the moment kind of passes. You're gonna have your hands full in a couple of minutes. You're a ball breaker, Bron, but you do think of everything. Hey, dog. What? Line went dead. He'll call back. Well, now you know your dog's still barking. You want to take care of business? Yeah. Hear that, Colonel? We got him. Cheltenham are locking on as we speak. You catch that American accent, then? I'm afraid I bloody did. Hey, Doc. Sounds U.S. military. Could be some sad wannabe who's seen too many war movies. It's sad or not, gentlemen. You want to be in central London, in the city. There's an inbound chopper to give you a lift. Brilliant. Isn't it? That's where the phone is. We're going to triangulate closer in. But I'm sending you grid references now. Central London? Yeah, they're wiring us into his mobile. Now he's made a call, GCHQ will be able to use it as a tracking beacon. They can do that? Catch up, Louis. What? Well, why do you think the government ties itself in knots so it doesn't have to use telephone intercept on a single call? Because then they have to admit to owning all that useful kit, and the civil liberties lobby would throw a fit. Here's our lift. luck. I make my own luck. Just take care of your end. Oi! Oi! It's okay! Sorry? He's with me. And who are you? Didn't you get the memo? What bloody memo? This one.
driving. This is Zero Alpha. We are on site and ground mobile. Do you have a target reference over? Zero Alpha, this is Sunray. We confirm you're in the right postcode area and we're working on the street address. Vector to the area. Keep your eyes sharp. Okay, we're in business, babe. Use a magnet. Okay, my job's done here. Clear on your end? Sir, he's using his phone. Hello, you love? Hang on a second. <sighs> Shit! Trouble? I just ruined a perfectly good bag. Am I clear to come down? Hold your position. Look, I don't need to be hanging around here with the timer running. Relax, it's 30 minutes. We'll be on the train to the airport by the time it blows. Okay, babe. Hey, you know what the guy in the crane cab was doing when I waxed him? Jerking off to a skin mag. Man, how dumb is that? As dumb as a guy, I guess. And don't call me babe. All call signs, this is Sunray. We are looking for a crane. I repeat, a crane. Hello. Got it. You stay with the bomb, see if you can neutralize it. And I want a team at the station. Which station, sir? We're working out which. The good news is, we've got our mobile number now. Good luck, hello. Yeah, you too. Finn, take your position up there. Dave, control things on the ground. I'll lower the bomb so you can take a look at it. I know, I can go up. Got broken ribs. I'll be quicker. How are you going to find her with all the crowds at the station? All you know is that she's a woman with an American accent. Now we know her phone number, we disable all the other phones in the cell area around the station. As soon as my boys are on the train, we call her and they home in on the ringing phone. You can do that? It's just a computer algorithm. Okay, the controls are trashed. Oh, shit. Look, Hanno, you're gonna have to walk the crane and rub down to the bomb. Yeah, and I love heights.
is trains late leaving. Yes, I expect so. Trains have been delayed all day. There's some bomb scare or something. God, this country's third world. The train to the airport. Which platform? Fourteen. <laughs> Okay, good. Mate, you're doing fine. Yeah. Bloody spider man. <sighs> now what? Oh, Jesus. Dave, you have to talk me through disabling this thing. Here's what I can see. Good man. Stand by. Call her. On the train. Burton, I said I'm on the train. Do you mind? Yes, I mind you. This is the quiet coach. So shut the hell up. Burton Haley was worrying about you. He's wondering what happened. I'm afraid it's not Burton. Who is this? Please go and talk in the lobby. Who is this? Please put your hands behind your head. What? Put your hands where I can see them. Now. Pull that trigger, and I pull mine, and I cut that old man in half. Shoot me in the spasm, and my hand kills him. Do you want that? No. Good. Now, shall I tell you how we're going to do this? No, I'm telling you. I will shoot you through the neck. There will be no spasm because you will be paralyzed below the neck. It might not even kill you, but it will stop you moving permanently. Now. Book me, Dano. Clip. Trooper, get her out of here. Move. wires from the power cell to the depth plug just the two okay separate them cut one do not bridge the gap with the cutter as you do you don't want a short circuit no that would not be good you okay will you stop nagging bollocks what happened he dropped the cutters no drama hello use your knife I haven't got a knife. What else have you got? 
One minute thirty-three. No way of cutting the wire. But I'll bring my knife. You haven't got time. Are you saying it's over? Unless. What? Clear the channel. Finn, you still in position? No, I wet my pants and ran away. Cut the wire with a bullet. Come on, Henry, you can't. That's a hell of a shot. Yeah, well, apparently, so's he. We have 52 seconds. Do it! Yes, sorry. You said you never miss. Stay still when you talk your move. Talk, 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 and now you're like a bloody pendulum. What happened? What happened? Nothing. Did he call me a pendulum? You all right, big man? No, I'm not all right. I'm hanging upside down, holding onto a flask of nuclear material. And the way my day's been going, I really don't think we should find out how well it does in the 200-foot drop test. Now, please, hurry up and get Spider-Man.